Hello, welcome to Pod Songs, where we interview inspirational people in service to others as inspiration for a new song. Today's guest is best selling author of the Badass series and motivational coach Jen Sincero. And my musical guest is virtuoso violinist Gregory Harrington. Oh, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks, Gregory. Excellent. Listen, great to meet you. Great to chat to you. Love your work. Love what you're doing. This is this is sort of pretty unique and awesome and phenomenal. So, I've listened to quite a number of podcasts and done my research. So the only thing I can do for you is just hope that I am value to your um uh, uh afternoon and just uh value to the conversation and put it up in a way that's just fun wow what a great introduction i'm glad i recorded that introduction because it makes me sound great so that's that's fine well, i'll well, go with it go with it thank you very much gregory you can you can stay excellent excellent you, you, don't, <laughs> have to, you, don't, you don't have to mute me for the rest of this now <laughs> so let's introduce gregory harrington here because we're kicking the show right off the bat so um, you're, I deduce from your accent that you're from Ireland. Yes. I'm just a part of that already. Yeah. yeah about this, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm across the pond from you. Um, no, and I usually word, use the word across the pond when I, when, when, when I deal with, you know, the U S and right, right. But, uh, I'm from Dublin originally. So, um, moved over to the U S about, uh, when I was 25. So I've been here ever since. Um, yeah. So. Irish born and well done quite well yeah. by the looks of it. I mean, you've had well, a stellar career, no? Um, I think, well, you know, something that's always relative because the goalposts for me change on a yearly basis. So you achieve your goals, you attain goals. And then the next thing, you know, the goals have to change so that the, the focus moves forward and you know, you're, 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 it's really your drive that, 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 that drives this, you know, you know, of, of, of what you really want to do. So, um. Uh, there, I, I would put it to this way that there are some magical moments that I'm incredibly proud of. Uh, and if I have a handful or a bucket load or whichever one you choose, uh, between now and when I, uh, give up this, this wonderful passion and beautiful career of mine, I will look back at this and, you know, you know, and smile. So you said, well, pod songs be up there is one of those you think? Uh, it is, it is already up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the no, but you played for presidents, vice presidents, heads of state, United Nations. So, wow. I mean, what, how, what was some of those highlights let's, so far on this journey? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, there's a, the, because I'm trying, because I, I, I'm not your traditional classical soloist, so I don't just play with orchestras or recitals. I've had like, I've had incredible experiences, you know, standing on the stage of Carnegie Hall with an orchestra behind me. And just before you hit your first note, the realization, uh, that every idol that you have had from Chrysler to, you know, to, 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 to Heifetz, even Joel, you know, whoever has stood good in that very same Carnegie spot. Carnegie Hall. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. wow. The, even the word has resonance. It does. And it, and, and it is this, like that there's nothing more beautiful than, um, looking out into the, the, the vast sort of blackness of dimmed out audience, but you know, in, and, and it, it's not so it, because, because the way the hall is designed, it doesn't look deep, I mean, you know, it's, it's acoustically, it's 3000 people that you're paying for it, but it is just so high. You realize that it's levels like, like the dress, dress circle, balcony one, <laughs> and then you go down. Unbelievable. Yeah. So it's beautiful. So, so there's moments like that where I just. Uh, I, I pinched myself. Did, did uh, you do it all right? Did you, did you hit the right note? I, I, I actually think I hit every note really. Like I was in, a, oh, I, was, <laughs> I was in the zone that night, right? So. Oh my God. But, I can't well, imagine a, a performance yeah. like that with, with yeah. a classical, you know, a fretless instrument like yours. I mean. Yeah. 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 So beautiful. And I, I do, one of the pieces I did was a, an arrangement that I, I, I had written, uh, Edda James at last, you know, and, and like, like in there, which is different to, you know, the, the usual stuff, but like when, once those doors open and you walk out on stage, it's the, like, and I've done it a number of times, but it is, 
a magical feeling. And, you know, from that to, you know, um, I remember I played for, uh, the current president and I've played for a number of them, but, um, we, you know, we had this beautiful moment afterwards. Uh, and, and, and this is really what makes the journey so much fun. It's those intimate, uh, human moments. And, um, you know, he, he, I, I, his, his great grandfather was a blind Irish musician, fiddler from County Louth in Dublin. Oh, I knew he was from Ireland, but I didn't know. You know in, in Ireland. So I, being a violinist, I picked a com- composition by a, but one of our most famous, uh, composers, Turlock O'Carlin, who was blind and from that area. So I did O'Carlin's concerto and I, and I, you know, and I, and it was just the connection uh, the, the, for, for the event was really, really beautiful. So afterwards when we were chatting and he was just so gracious and so eloquent and so in the moment and just made you feel that, you know, you were the only one he was talking to. And we had talked about, you know, loss cause I'd lost family members, parents and whatnot. And he has obviously a lot of loss. So there's an empathy about that, but he said, you know, it is, people don't understand how difficult it is to get up on stage and be eloquent and hold it together and, and the pressures that come with that, uh, because he had, uh, he had, um, uh, he had a stutter when he was, he was young and still does and works so hard to overcome that. And he said, um, he said that when I was a 10 year old boy, he said, I used to recite WB Yeats into the, into the mirror all the time. <laughs> you no, know, right. I'm, I'm, so, you know, we read this lovely back and forth about that. Um, and, you know, and I didn't want to keep him, but like he, 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 the, the thing he said to me was, he said, Greg, he said, you know, something, he said, if I had your talent, I would be president, <laughs> which was a lovely little, <laughs> I know, you know, so, he said, like, like, well, <laughs> well, absolutely. But yeah, but, but, but there, ergo, right. It, 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 it was just a moment where he, you know, had the presence of mind to acknowledge it, uh, like something human and connected and just make you feel good. Right. So it was. Uh, it was that, 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 that spirit, which I, I, I really love, you know, Gosh. well, I think I'm just going to cancel Jen and we can keep hearing your anecdotes because this is fast well, and this, I mean, I the, 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 the drops I get on this show, you wouldn't believe, you know, the singer songwriters I have to work with the trash yeah. that I have to speak to is just, you wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't because I've listened to half of them and it's just, <laughs> another, another. Uh, 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 thinkers, innovators, and, you know, uh, thought makers of, uh, that, that roam this beautiful globe of ours. So let's like, <laughs> kudos to you for doing what you're doing. It's, 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 it's been a, um, a, a, a much, uh, enjoyed process for me to learn, uh, about you and, and, and how you're like the, 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 the vision you have for this and what it's doing. So I love it. Well, thanks Gregory. That's, that's great. It's very kind of you to say, but. I mean, with the music, because with your song, because if I was without you today, I was going to interview Jen and you know, maybe the audience don't know Jen, but she's what she's quite, what's, yeah. What's the way to put this? Um, well, the title of the book is alone is, you know, how to be a badass. So if I was going to write a song for her without you, I would have to, it would have to be quite, she was in a punk band too, and it would have to be include some of her terminology, but with you, I would, I would much rather have this opportunity to make some beautiful classical piece. So there's going to be this, there's these forces at work. I don't know what song's going to come out of this. Um, but I would love to do something super classical and super hybrid. Right. And yeah. And then, you know, I kind of do the, some, some poetry on it or something, but it's your composition. So it's one of the, because those Philip Glass pieces you did and also the other um i just wow it's just it's just fantastic it's Thank so you. to opportunity to, let's just let's uh, i'll do some lyrics that are roughly related to jen you know about motivating being your best but let's make it a beautiful yeah. violin piece yeah yeah and, the, and, the, and you know you, you, you we could even stick a hendrix motif in there and just you know and, and, and or or <laughs> or, 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 or still or still we stick in an adamant um, um, uh, motif. Cause I think he, he appeared in her, 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 her music video, you know, that there's a way, there's ways to make sort of, yeah, yeah. So there's, so well, there's ways this, this, this sort of, uh, 
such fun. I, I, I just always believe that the, the only way to, like, it's all about connecting and making things relevant for others. Mm. Well, that's great because you take care of the music then and I'll do some lyrics. So you do the melody in there because I think it's so much easier than, because I've worked with violinists in the past and they, they come in, they put something on the top and then it's just like another, but I'd really like to do some classy pop, something beautiful. We, we, like, we, we would be your, your pure. We shall, we shall work this. We'll figure wow. something out. Yes. This is fantastic. Yeah. We'll get creative. We'll, we'll make Jen fit in somehow. Yeah. But please, let's get back to this. Enough about that. Let's get back to these stories of your performances okay. because this is this is fantastic to hear. So, some more anecdotes, please. Um, oh, what, so, so what? I'm just basically ser- skipping across the surface of, of sort of different things I've done. I think that, like, if it, the, the, the logical progression would be going from you know Carnegie to playing for the current president to um, going to the one actually sporting events, right? So I, I've been doing. I've done a lot of anthems. The anthem is a much bigger uh, deal, I should say, over here in America than it is, you know, in in, in Ireland and the UK. Um, so, I'm a, I'm a massive rugby fan. Like I am a massive rugby fan. <laughs> so, so uh, the, uh, the proper, not American football. This is the real. Yeah, yeah. This is rough. This, this is rough and ready. Real men. The, the, this is tackle, no pads. Stay on for eighty minutes. Get a bit of it. You know, no complaining and be highly complimentary to the ref at all times, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's probably the only game where, where the ref doesn't get severe abuse, right? You know, it, but it's, it's mm-hmm. I, I, I sort of grew up playing it and it wasn't really necessarily the best sport for fingers, you know, because we don't hear of the, the broken fingered violinist very often. No. So, so yeah, I, I gave up at the, I, I got out before, before the series. Well, I, you're, I, a, you're a light bill. What position were you playing? Um, I start now, I, I will just, um, preempt this with the fact that I did all this incredibly badly, right? There's a reason that I'm not a, a rugby player, obviously, you know, very badly, but I loved, uh, I was playing out at half and fullback and I loved, I loved it, you know, just, just, I think it was a little bit, there was, there was, there was this creativity in those positions a little bit more than others. And I think, you know, it was the whole idea of looking at a big, bigger picture and that chess, that chess puzzle that you're trying to do, of course. When you're dealing at you know under 16s and under 15s it's 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 very it's more like headless chickens uh, the way we were doing it at the time but look it was a lovely experience um but you know i got a call um i had done things for the lakers when kobe was around i'd done things you know for uh the nets and i played in madison square garden you know do doing anthems there and i got a call uh, to play in soldier field uh, in chicago uh and this was uh, the the time Ireland played the All Blacks, uh, New Zealand All Blacks, um, and uh, I, I I had done a function that summer, uh, and Johnny Sexton and Ronan O'Gara and Rory Best and one or two other rugby players were there, and they're the current captains and number tens and whatnot. And I, I was doing a little bit of U two uh, at it, and, and Jimi Hendrix, and I mixed in with one or two classical pieces, and they absolutely loved it. So um, I think Johnny had said to me, he said, "Look." I don't know if you'd ever be interested, but would you, would you have any interest in coming along and doing a little bit of entertainment and playing for the squad sometime? And here was I doing my little happy dance without no, you know, trying not to let <laughs> on, my, on my face. Um, so two days before that, before that, I went in and I did a performance with the squad and talked and uh, hung out with them afterwards and looked like it was just phenomenal. So everything from a little bit of red hot chili peppers to Vivaldi to Hendrix to you know, some Irish traditional stuff. So I'm, I'm like, it's, it's now talk about being nervous. Uh, when you grow up idolizing a Jersey, right. And I idolized the Irish rugby Jersey, uh, and then seeing, and you know, seeing, uh, all like, like 28 faces that you have just followed for the last 10 years, mm. right in front of you, folded arms, feet out in their, in their training gear, just looking up at you, you know, and, and saying, I have to entertain these people. Um, <laughs> If you can get across to that sort of audience, you know that you're doing something that connects. So like even, even did a little bit of a uh, Jose, like I did a bit of research and I knew that some of the players loved certain music and so church, right. And, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. phenomenal. It was a phenomenal experience. But then two days later I went in, uh, and did Ireland's call in the stadium and there is something so incredibly uh, it just goes right through your bones when you hear 65,000 of your fellow countrymen 
singing along with just you, right? It's just, it's really, really cool. So, and, it, and it was the first time in art history that we ever beat the All Black. So like, <laughs> so, maybe that had an effect, you know, a little bit of credit to you, you know? I, I, I would love to say it did, right? Nothing to do with it, right? But I, I, you know, I, having that ability to say I was actually on the pitch that day, legitimately, like, no, not, no, no, not, not, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's all little, little, little things like this that I just love. I really do. Yeah, especially, I mean, Ireland's the land of the fiddle now. I mean, so you've kind of, yeah. you've climbed the peak of the peak, no? Indeed. Indeed. You know, I mean, we were, we're, Although I got to say, growing up, I never really listened to fiddling music. It's only, it's only when I've been sort of studying, you know, cause the, I, I do a lot of cross genre stuff, uh, now, and it's very easy to be a classical violinist and play something like whatever you t take fiddle music, take Michael Bublé, take any other genre and play it like a classical yeah. musician. And you leave that audience dead, emotions done, right? However, uh, you know, uh, if you go and you spend a month or two just looking and studying how the fiddlers do their bowing and the, the, the little small little movements of how they slide and how they go in and out of notes and you embody what the essence of that is. Now, you will never do that, but you, if you embody that, mm -hmm. then you have a chance of creating something unique. Uh, if you play some Argentinian tango and you try and really figure out what is that driving organic conversation that those musicians have with their audience, then you have that, that chance to make it unique. And it's when you do those things and you match a Hendrix acoustically, and you almost sound like you're, you got an amp going on and you get, you get right on top of the bridge and you're creating this really distortive sound. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, uh, it, there was a time I was playing for, uh, uh, for Conor McGregor and like that there's something, uh, there's something really interesting about when you're doing this and you see someone like that who you don't expect to, to resonate with, like, and he's just there and he's just saying, you just see the head forward or back and he's enjoying it and he's loving it. You know, it, that, that, that's the sign that you're communicating and no matter what you do as any artist, anybody on stage, speaker, uh, you know, coach, um, exactly what you do in your songs, you, you know, you, 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 communicate. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you know, it, 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 or, and through it, through an instrument where music is, is, is an alphabet that you don't, you, sorry, music is a language that you don't need any alphabet. You, it either resonates and you love it or it leaves you cold. Right. So it's, if you embody that, then, you know, people love it or hate it. it it's just in your job, you, 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 you're, you're doing what you're doing. So let's go some, it's back, some, back, some, back to something you said at the start, which is cause well, to us, you're at the top of the mountain here, but from where you are, are you surrounded by mountains that you still have to climb? I mean, what's, what are you thinking? What are you, what is yours? Because we have well, this episodes about, you know, being a badass and gaming higher. So. Yeah. 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 So, so I, for, for, for me, I sort of, um, I always, I talk about goalposts, but, but if you put it in the mountain range, it's, it's a case of, you know, you're, cl you're, you're climbing the hills of Ireland. Okay. You get to the top, actually, no, there's, there's bigger mountains. Uh, and you climb those mountains and then you see really, actually there's much bigger mountains out there, there. Yeah. and you keep finding and you, like, I think it's, 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 there's always more to do. There's always the, the whole, uh, there's always more challenges and it's how you creatively drive forward to go through those challenges and reach those challenges and redefine those challenges about, you know, and th there's no point in redefining a challenge just for the sake of doing, having a challenge. It's going to mean something because if you don't have the drive to go right through and past it, mm -hmm. you know, you won't do it. Um, uh, it's like that, the, 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 the Nike logo, just do it. A hundred percent of people have phenomenal ideas. We all have phenomenal ideas. It's that 2% that, that go that long, hard road to actually actualize, finish the job, turn around and say, I actually did a good job on that. Mm -hmm. As opposed to go three quarters of the way and say, oh, yeah, or, or get distracted or, or, you know, the, 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 the road changes or the, 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 uh, doubt comes in and the excuse mm -hmm. can follow. Right. So the hardest part is working through the excuse and the doubt and the, the barrier that you're going to set internally to, to, to actualizing that goal. So what do you have to do now? What's, what's your next mountain to climb? 
Um, well, seeing as, as, as COVID has been so delightful on the performing arts industry, mm. um, I, my last live performance was 20, like, like, uh, February, 2020, right? So, wow. um, so that, 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 that's obviously taking its toll. So things that I'm doing at the moment is I'm, you know, pro- trying to perform, trying to do more online content, uh, and see, can I create, it's so like, see, can I create a new album when I'm in during, during this, the pandemic I've started that, that, and, and, and that's why I, I, it's fascinating for me to, um, you know, to be part of this uh, Jen's interview, uh, cause I've started just the infant steps of becoming a speaker and, um, you know, uh, trying, trying to now uh, try, trying to figure out what my message is and how, how I can take 25 years of experience and some motivation stories and translate that into a learning experience for a corporate audience, you know, um, so it's, it's the, it's, it's, it's again, how you, how you channel the creativity, especially now in a void. Well, what, uh, cause I wanted to ask you why you spoke, you wanted to speak to Jen. Is it, is that, have you read her books then? Uh, I believe it or not, I haven't, no, but it's, 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 um, um, I've, I've known about her for a while and the more I read about her, the, the, like it's, it's that story that, um, I think anybody who is successful, there's a, you, there's a, there's a similar path or there's, there's a similar set of catalysts that make that person go forward to complete that, that, that journey and look back, look, 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 look back on the, on the finished article. Um, and then redefine what that finished article has to be then in the future. So I know I was just fascinated by her story and who she is and the fact that she started up the music business, uh, and she has this punk background, um, you know, and then goes, went into the motivational speaking and the, the life coaching and, uh, how she branded that and how, how she sort of, you know, how, 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 how that story developed. So that was really the, 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 the the, the reason why um, she, amongst the many phenomenal guests you suggested, uh, uh, spoke, uh, you know, spoke out. Yeah, no, that's great. Because yeah, I reach out to many different people because you have to, it's a numbers game. So people who have who've done other podcasts and, and very small percentage get back to you. So, and then I make a list and I send it yeah. to, to you to take it. Yeah. So I haven't done too many self-help because also she says herself that she has this, she didn't like the self-help movement. It is, it is a kind of, it's, it's, it's a lot of language and, you know, hugging everyone and wearing a name tag and it's a lot, but her, so she is kind of this anti yeah self with her language, you know, your brain is your bitch and things like that. Yeah. I, 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 and and that's what really resonates. It's it's uh, that that's what creates the unique uh, position right, or niche, um, where you know nobody wants to have the the very uber polite, um, you know, nicety nicety. Listen, you're doing a great job. like like you, you know it's it's sometimes you just need that jarring um, uh, uh, spark and and, right. nut and and stuff like that. And she's like and and she has branded this in such a remarkable way in such a wonderful way that really, uh, gets you want to uh, look and read more and find out more as opposed to mm-hmm. me, I'll solve your, you know, I'll solve your problems. It's, 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 it's really spark the spark, the, 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 the mind to find out more. But why would someone like you, I mean, you, to me, you're this fantastic musician on a mountain. Why do you want to do, you know, corporate gigs or talking or motivation? I mean. Um, a couple of reasons, right? Because I've, I've done, an, I, I, I've, I'm part of, part of the portfolio for want of a better word of the things that I offer, you know, classical concerts, anthems, you know, uh, corporate entertainment, right? So, um, you know, you go into your gala and you have a 12 minute performance as, as the cent- as the centerpiece. So it's a very different audience and it's a very different market. And I feel a, so comfortable. I love going, doing those and networking and, um, that audience, you know, whether, whether you're doing a thousand people at the, at the, at the, at the, at the Waldorf or wherever it is, there's a, there's a, there's an essence of being very comfortable on those stages. And, you know, I think, I think one of the reasons I'm looking to do this is because a, I love communicating. 
And I love the idea of being on stage and communicating and trying to actually get to everyone in the room. Mm. Uh, and you so know, would it make you nervous standing on stage if you had to speak instead of doing the violin? No, because uh, well, well, that, that, that's just a function of how prepared you are. Because in the corporate in the corporate side or, or uh, in, the, in the entertainment side of it, I am always speaking, and it's a narrative that goes through whether it's a fifteen or a twenty-five minute performance. And you take somebody on, on that journey and it's about how you time everything and how, how, how that, you know, you have a little bit of banter and you, you, you know, it, it's how you react. So that part of it, I actually really like, mm-hmm. um, I feel, I think, I think, uh, you know, I feel that when I'm speaking on stage or when I'm on stage, those moments can go very slowly for me as I'm not panicked. If I lose my words, it's easy to navigate around. I can think during the moment. And I think, I think that's one of the things that I would, I, I would try and that's probably one of the things, you know, you want to try and, uh, uh, maximize, um, employees or, uh, output, you know, it's, how do you think, how do you, how do you challenge someone, uh, to think more creatively, mm-hmm. uh, and, 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 and think outside the box and, you know, in the moment. So, yeah. So who do you look up to in the music world then, would you say? Oh, um, you're modeling yourself on, who do you think? I, 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 musically. I, or, or, in, or what do you, what do you say yourself? I, I, trying to be a life okay. coach here. Yeah. I am. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily see myself as, as anybody else in this speaking part of it, because I think you have, there's a beautiful opportunity to, to, to incorporate you know, if you bring in a 15 piece orchestra and you, you, you let's say you're just doing uh, C suites like mm-hmm. uh, uh, m- management, uh, and you can get them and, and you can see how you can show them how a whole orchestra like a, a, a fits together and parts um, interweave. And you take out one of the one of the bass lines and you see how it can fall apart, or you put them in, the, in, in, in that certain part. Like there's so many different ways you can do this to give them a completely different experience. And using mat- music as a metaphor oh, to, okay, I get it. you know, I, again, I'm at the, and I should say, and I, I, you know, infancy of creating this and cause it's all up here. It's now how, about how I'm sort of just writing it and just slowly, um, conceptualizing it. But, but, you know, you can use music as a metaphor to, um, do leadership, to problem solve, to group. There's so many ways you can do this. And even if you go into it, but there's the, the more rigid structure of classical to the, 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 the to, to a much more freelance or, or a free line with jazz and see, you know, can you, for people that don't really understand music, can you bring this, boil this down to three lines for them to have right. a, a bold moat so that they can, it's not even thinking outside the box. It's just here. There's the, you know, let, let's just, let's just take a different box, right? Outside the box is one thing. Let, let's just really just do this differently. So. You know, it's, 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 it's been a, it's been a, um, a pandemic sort of, um, right. pandemic where I've spent time just really conceptual, you know, so I'm writing and I've been writing every day. So a lot of the material is, 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 is put down as drafts and roughly done. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's been, it's just... hello there, Jen. How are you? We're just talking about you. You Indeed. were That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show. This is welcome to Pod Songs. This is Gregory Harrington. You, know, I've sent you his, his link with his um, his fantastic violin player. Right. Jen, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. This is such a cool idea you guys are doing. I love it. It's phenomenal. Yep, phenomenal. Thank, <laughs> thank you. So, are, are, can you hear me? Okay, I can. I can put on uh, a microphone and pods and stuff. But usually this works okay. But whatever you guys want. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Good. Where are you today? I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Where are you guys? We're in Italy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I am in New York City. The, uh, the, um, yeah. Yeah. Just, how's it going yeah. there? I mean, how's it going anywhere? Who are we? Who are you? Why are we on this? Yeah. 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 No, I, I got back from, um, um, Florida yesterday and, and, and speaking about, um, two completely and utterly different worlds like Florida and New York and mm. the, reaction, the reaction of pandemic where it's, 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 it sort of feels as if it doesn't exist down there to 
the trauma of living through uh, the pandemic. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a similar parallel in Italy where, you know, we're still highly cautious as we, as, as we, as we uh, reemerge through this, but yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Really interesting time. So. Yeah. So before you came on, we were chatting about Gregory. He's having his pandemic project of trying to be um, a speaker about, if I understand it right, how orchestras can help people and how music Maybe you explain it very well. Absolutely. So, 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 sorry, Jen, you know, and this is one of the reasons why I was fascinated with, by you and your story and uh, your music background and, and, and how you've actually branded what you've done to such phenomenal uh, uh, success and, and, and business. Um, you know, as someone who's been on stage for 25 years and who loves talking on stage and who loves that, 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 that feeling of communicating with everybody in the audience, whether that's five people or a stadium of 80,000 people, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, one of the things that I'm trying to do, and I, as I said to, uh, you know, as I said to it, I'm in my pure infancy first step, right? It's where I'm conceptualizing everything. So it's still a far way away, but it's that idea of using music as a metaphor for, uh, solving leadership problems, solving corporate, uh, you know, employee motivation. Um, stuff like that. And there's, there's a way to do it in a beautiful way that incorporates stories that incorporates, you know, a keynote that incorporates coaching sessions. So it's again, surely like I've been writing for the last year, just, just logging everything. And it's, 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 it's just a, 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 a slow start, but just something that I would, I'm, I'm sort of embarking on. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely use music in all of my personal development. I just, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but you put on it, you change the music and all of a sudden everything changes. Like I, I always talk about how I put a moratorium on listening to Neil Young when I was trying to get my act together. Cause I love him, but he's really depressing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff that was way more upbeat, you know, but it does, it really affects your mood and your energy level and your belief in what's possible. I think it's, I think music is huge. So yeah, yeah. indeed. I, yeah. And we have to write a song inspired by this conversation. So I know your taste in music, Jen, is nothing after 1986. Is that right? Uh, uh, pretty guilty as charged. And, and, you know, I like house music. That's like my attempt to be edgy. But even that at this point is probably like 90s, right? Like, what the hell do I know? But uh, yeah. I'm All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to go rely on you for the lyrical content and not the musical. Okay. That's about the best. <laughs> So we should go into, what should we start talking about? What, what should the song be about? Wow. What should the song be about? Um, well, I think the things that I'm really focused on right now, which is a little different than what I've been focused on in the past, maybe, maybe not. Um, really just following what excites you. So, so for now I'm finding in my life, you know, my career has gone beyond any of my wildest dreams. Um, I am not motivated by making money anymore. Like that really was sort of the, the driving force for a lot of my work was I had to feed myself. So it really was around making money and also doing what I love and having fun and all those things. But now that the financial piece has worked itself out, I'm in this lovely and disorienting space of, you know, now what? And, and so the questions I'm asking myself now are, is it going to be fun? Is it going to invigorate me and give me energy? And is it going to have meaning? And is it going to help other people and, and have a lot of meaning for me? So I would say, um, if that's helpful, you know, that is probably what I would, my, that's what my song is about right now in my life. Is it fun? Is it invigorating? Is it meaningful? Okay. Because my last guest, I like to tie the shows together, mm -hmm. um, was Kyle Cease. I don't know if you've heard, he's an uh, American comedian. Well, oh, he's you know what? I've heard of him. I don't know his thought, but. He's a stand up comic. He had the best comedy central stand up showcase in 2009. Right. He was in a few teen movies. Um, oh, okay. And he. And he's made the switch now to being a motivational, a transformational comedian. And Man. from what I understand, you're making the, you're going the other way. You're now trying to write comedy. Well, I kind of feel like I've always been writing comedy. Like, I feel like the reason you are a badass to 
so well. Part of the reason is that it was funny. And that's, right. you know, um, and the big not so secret secret about me is I do not enjoy writing. So, um, uh, but I, I love writing comedy. I get mm-hmm. love writing. Should there be at the same sentence? In the same order as that, but my favorite thing to write is comedy. So, um, so I put that in all of my books and now you're right. Like I am sort of like, I'm working on a screenplay with a friend, you know, that doesn't have anything to do with you are a badass. And, um, but I'm pretty preachy anyway. So the, all that stuff comes in anyway. Like I always want to like prop people up and scream and yell about what I think is important. So even if I'm writing comedy, I have a feeling it's going to still have some of that motivational flavor to it what would you know about badass the movie i could imagine some sassy girl yeah we've talked about it um and it's pretty fun and okay so here is an example of what i just said about fun invigorating meaningful so we've had really great production companies approach us and we've even optioned it a couple of times and then i just started getting really clear on um you know do I care if there's a badass movie? Like really, I, I, this is a real great silver lining of the pandemic for me anyway, has been to slow down on and really, you know, you make so many knee jerk reactions and you're so caught in a pattern of doing something because it could be really successful or you have a great idea. So you're going to go do it, but not taking the moment to stop and think and be like, yeah, but do I want to? And what if it's as successful as it could get? Do I want to be famous? Do I, do I, you know, do I want all the things that could possibly come from this? And so I have been so, so grateful for this time to slow down, especially at this pretty peak point in my career to be like, all right, what do I want? Is it going to be fun, invigorating and meaningful? And if it's not, screw it. So with the Badass the movie, um, I realized I actually don't care if there's a badass movie made about life. But I really care if there's a bad movie made about my life. So I was like, okay, well, then, there you go. If there's going to be a movie, I have to write it because I think that's the only way it will be as funny as I need it to be. So of course. that's, yeah, so that's where it's coming. So to answer, to kind of answer your question, I'm kind of working on it. I'm, okay. I actually got a hip replacement last week. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, um, I was almost going to do this in my pajamas, by the way, you guys. I was like, yeah. Eh, Unhooking from the ice machine to get through the interview. And I was like, I could put on some lipstick and brush my hair and put on a shirt. But anyway. Um, we so, haven't been pajamas for a year, so don't worry about I, it. Right now, I was like, yeah, I, I bet. I really don't think these guys are. But uh, so I am. Yeah. So that is something that I'm just allowing myself having fun, you know, taking notes every time an idea comes to me slowly perhaps maybe writing the treatment for that because it took you if the earlier jen would never have if she could hear you speaking now she might not agree with you because you spent what three it was three years to to get the book to being a number one bestseller after you, you oh. Wrote, so oh yeah I'd, work, I'd, you know? I'd already be the movie would be in production by now with the old me totally <laughs> yeah yeah energy's a big thing and you know i'm 55 i'm like you know, doing a puzzle, listening to a podcast, like it's a great day. But but we'll see. You know, we've all been in this halted alternate reality where there's been a lot of lying around. So I'm sure I, I have a million. I have a lot of ideas. We'll see what I follow through on. But. That's great. That's funny because when I was respect, waiting to interview you, I didn't know what gen I was going to get, you know, because I've been listening to old interviews. So... It could have been a wild ride, but it sounds like it's going to be a pretty, a pretty chilled, pretty chilled. It might, and it might not. Like, that's the thing. And I, and I don't know about you guys. Like, I really have spent a lot of the past year lying around and taking it slow and, and just being lovely contemplative space. And I like to do stuff and I love variety and I love adventure. And I'm quite, I'm honestly not quite sure what is going to emerge now because I am older, but I got a new it. And, and I, you know. I'm bionic now, so who knows? <laughs> I think the hip was more productive than I was in the past. I have no idea. I don't think the hip but was holding you back. I think for you, was well, <laughs> What did you say? I don't think the hip was holding you back with the writing. <laughs> uh, but you want to? I mean, you want to talk about uh, tiles? I hear and uh, redoing your house is right. Cool. We'll see. Yeah, let's see. So I, 
I renovated the house I'm sitting in right now for two years, for two yeah. full years. I didn't have a roof or walls. And I was, and I didn't even know anything about design and I became completely obsessed. And this is another thing where it's like, and I talk about this in my books where you don't know, you don't know what you know, don't know. Right. So I think a lot of times when people are trying to start a new business or shift their wealth consciousness or, you know, just change a, a, an old, old behavior pattern. We, we try to figure it out in our minds first. That's sort of what we're trained to do, right? To like put all the pieces in place and have a, uh, have a game plan and, and know what to go and do. And that is important. And you do need to plan. And you also, and this is the whole surrender thing where you need to put everything you know into action and do the work and pay attention. And you need to lean back and give it up and receive the information that you can very easily block out by being too, too persistent in your needing to know, too persistent in your plan, too persistent in just like following along with the known of your current reality, right? So you do everything in your current reality and open yourself up to the new reality that you have not yet experienced and not pretending that you know all the details. So, um, so with that, it's like, yeah, you, you, oh shit, I totally forgot my dream. <laughs> but when, when you, uh, with anything that, with anything that's unknown that you're doing, you, there's a, there's a, a delicate dance between taking meaningful action and opening yourself up to the unknown because it's from the unknown that you're going to get the really big, important information because you don't know it yet. So I always talk about how like, you're going to get a hit on something to do that you totally don't want to do because it's way too uncomfortable or way too expensive or just puts you out there in a way you, you could be totally taken down for and called a fraud about, right? That's how you know that's the thing you need to go do. So, uh. when, so when you said so then this is why in a lot of the self-help stuff we talk about, um, you don't need to know the how, you just need to know the what. So you do the how of what you know how to do but you don't do it with such blinders on that you cut yourself off from the stuff that's already there. That's always, always, always been there that can't reach you because you're so busy knowing being stuck in the known. Mm -hmm. Right. So for example, I'll give you an example if you want one, um, where, when I was working on my wealth consciousness and my finances and stuff, I, Did was I was at one of these wealth seminars and some coach was up on stage talking about stuff that really was like so hitting home for me. And I was like, oh my God, this woman is totally speaking to me. She worked with women entrepreneurs who were specifically really crappy about making money. And um, and so she she's like, and I'm taking on some more private clients right now. And and I was like, I have to work with her. She's gonna change my life. And then when she said her fee, it was literally one third of my annual income. So the old me would have been like, nice to meet you, lady, you know, and I was out. But because and this is the surrender part where I was like, ah, oh, here's the sign. Like, she's perfect. Everything she's saying speaks so directly to me. I know in my gut that this could totally change my life. And I 100 percent do not want to do it because I'm so terrified about this money thing. And because I hired, and when I hired her, I tripled my income in three months. It, it totally sent me on a different trajectory. But if I hadn't done the scariest wow. thing that I could have seen to do, I never would have gotten where I got. Wow. So I really, I mean, the one thing like people that always ask me at the end of interviews, like if you could give one piece of advice for people to walk away with, I always say, do something that scares the living crap out of you, <laughs> that excites you in equal parts, terrifies you, because that's, that's like getting out of your comfort zone. That's taking the leap into the void. That's everything we talk about all the time, but it really is quite simple. You will hear or see something that scares the crap out of you. And a lot of times you, you, you don't hear it or see it because you're, 
where your focus is, is so null on expansion, right? So mm, yeah. in the old days, I was so like, I can't afford it. I have, I suck at money. I, I, I can't put anything else on my credit card. I'm so in debt. Like I was so focused on that, that if I had seen that coach during that time of my life, there's no way in hell, I wouldn't have even heard her. I literally wouldn't have even registered the fact that she was for hire. But the fact that I was like cracking myself open and being like, I am a money magnet. I, you know, there's a gun in the universe, like all that stuff, like that I was like. This has to be a like, movie. This has got to be a movie. <laughs> well, that's it, right? <laughs> it's painful. It's like the jaws of life. But because I'm cracking open, I allowed myself to hear that. And then I was like, oh, shit. That's exactly what I've been looking for. When the student is ready, the teacher appears and the teacher is usually not someone you want to pay. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i heard you now anyway. i heard you um because mm -hmm. you talk about the g word in the book and mm -hmm. about you know open your spiritual open yourself and the higher energy and you know the, it's the the law of attraction stuff and one interesting thing i which also another a synchronicity for me was the last guest kyle he said he had he, re he had a child um, he got upset about something and he had a childhood memory that he realized that mm -hmm. that triggered, you know, I'm, I'm upset because my, my mother left me one time and I have to run after the car. And, and that's why that I'm upset in this moment. Yeah. And you, I heard that you yep. said that your dad, the reason that you had the money problems was because your father would sometimes give you $20 and you think by having too much money, you're going to be better than him and you're not going to get his yep. love or some sort of, some sort of way. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's almost. 99.9% .9 always about our dear parents, wow. you know, it's all about, but we were, how we were raised and what information we took in as the truth, as youngsters, you know, you're stupid, you're unworthy, you, you suck at making money. You can't, you know, you know, whatever the information is that we're getting it really. And it's, you know, and they're, they're dealing with the stuff their parents gave them. So it's uh -huh. all, and it's not necessarily malicious by any means, but it's just, yeah, our parents absolutely absolutely dictate how we perceive reality how did you get to hear this voice i mean did you have therapy or how do you get people to break through this do you reckon right. yeah so um there's sort of a, you know there are many methods and I, I really do think the most important thing you do is you decide to make the change right so there's not one way that you get these aha moments right you sign up to make a change. So I signed up to stop pretending that I couldn't make money. I, I, you know, I signed up to just, and it wasn't also, it was about the money, but it was also about just being like, seriously, Jen, like you're on planet earth for one go round and you're going to spend it living in a fucking garage, complaining about money, having like nickel and diming every single time. But like, how boring is that? So, so it was honestly about the fact that being broke is really boring. It truly is. Like you can't do it stuff if you don't have money. But it was also about me spending my finite time on planet Earth short, you know, short selling myself, like really being like, this is the best I think I can do. So it was it was also about stepping into a much bigger and more exciting version of myself, one that I was really excited about. So um so that's so it is about making the decision. And then once you get on that path, you do every single thing you can to, to think of to, to move yourself into, you know, you just keep taking the next right step. So as far as like hearing those voices and, and, and getting to the root of your, your problems, um, I think um, reading, reading books like mine, reading all the other brilliant, brilliant books out there, listening to smart speakers, um, you know, just doing the work. Um, hiring mentors and coaches and stuff like that. And, um, and, and then, but the thing also that I found for me, I did a lot of mantra writing. I've done a ton of therapy. I, you know, whittled it down as best I could, but I feel like that. And then that specific, um, that specific, you know, waking up to that. My father was the reason that I wasn't allowing myself to make money happened because of an action I took. So I think it's all parts of like, mm. you know, definitely mindset and it's doing the work and it's writing and it's reading and listening and la la and taking terrifying action. Again, it comes back to that. So 
that story that you are talking about happened to me when I was at a co another coaching seminar because I was at all the cheesy coaching seminars. <laughs> and, this, and this guy, and really, and believe me, it was so, I was like, God, if any of my friends. Could see Hello, me, my name's like, Jen. Like, it's, huh? Uh, you know, my name is. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the name tag and just like Norcosaurus. And, and they were always in Las Vegas, which is a city I can't stand. But anyway, but I was like, I don't need to be cool. I need to get some money in my pocket. So, um, but anyway, so I was at one of these things and, um, and there was another coach. And this is, this is after I started with the seven, the, with the first coach that was a third of my annual income. So I was sort of already in that world and I was used to paying crazy amounts of money. But this guy, and this is, this man was on stage and he was speaking and his fee was $85,000 a year to work with him. And I was like, Ooh. you know, but again, I cranked myself up in money flowed to me easily and freely. I was, you know, I was in the game. So instead of going to my old standby of, I can't afford that. I, I went to, how am I going to get $85,000 and just that and it was in that moment and it's really weird like all of my huge epiphanies come to me visually so in the moment where like he named his price and you know after i finished throwing up in my mouth <laughs> i i started thinking about how am i gonna find eighty five thousand dollars instead of he's high that is robbery i would never pay anybody that kind of money i went to how am i gonna find it that simple mindset shift called up this image of my dear sweet dad my dad's like this old italian dude who was always wearing this yellow v-neck sweater and his sneakers and you know with and i had this vision of dad like with his hands in his pockets looking at his feet feeling so sad because he he didn't, I didn't need him anymore and it was and i burst into tears i'm actually gonna burst into tears right now but mm. Um, but it was so visceral and so deep. And I was like, oh my God, I am not allowing myself to be financially successful because I don't want to hurt my dad's feelings. Wow. And it changed everything. And I, and I, and after that, once I realized that I was, it was amazing. Like seeing my dad, like just moving forward. Like when I was finally financially successful and I tell my dad like, Hey dad, I made a million bucks. Da, da, da. At the end of the conversation, he'd always be like, well, do you need any help? Can I help you? And I'd be like, yeah, could you send me a hundred bucks? I'd be like, absolutely. <laughs> and so and the old me would have been like, that asshole didn't listen to anything I said. He thinks I'm not successful. Like I would go into this tirade about not being seen. And, and, and even though it was true, the fact, the bigger, more important fact was he only really knew how to show me love by sending me a hundred bucks. And so where's the harm in that? Let the guy send me a hundred bucks. So I got a hundred bucks. He feels good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, but it was really yeah. deep, really deep. And I never, I never would have gotten there if I hadn't taken the action of showing up at that thing and, you know, deciding I was going to get coached by this guy and all that stuff. And did you coach, just, did you sign up with him? You know, it's interesting. I, I did. And then I yanked it. So it was, it was, it was, it, but then hmm. it's a very long story, but I did. And then there was just something, and I love this guy, and I, I still so respect his coaching talks. I got this like gut hit that I was like, he's not my coach. Like he's an amazing speaker, he's an amazing teacher. He's not my coach. I ended up signing up with the the same coach who I right. used before. She was also at that time eighty five thousand dollars a year, so it was the same amount of money. <laughs> that obscene amount of money. Um, but I ended up hiring her instead, and. That was when, um, that's when I wrote, you are a badass. That's when everything just, yeah, I made no, that. Wow. That year. Wow. I think, I think we, we, we really grow when we, when we go to that, 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 that place that just makes it so uncomfortable. I yeah. Just, no. I dive right through it and just see what happens and, 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 and experience it in the moment. You cannot plan yeah. this. No nope. pain, no gain. No, no, no. What's <laughs> what? What's yeah. What? Jen, just a, just a quick question, like just as you were talking, and it's fascinating to 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 uh, to, to, to to hear your your your, your, your journey. Um, was there any one moment that you were terrified that acted as a catalyst to put you on the path that 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 that, that, that you're on now? I mean, uh, maybe. Oh, all, oh, okay, all of them. Yeah, like the moment where I paid her a third of my annual income. Yeah. Oh, and then like 
putting up my little plaque, like I became my very first business that I started was how to write and sell your nonfiction book proposal like that. So the coach that I had hired was an online marketing person. Hmm. And so she taught me, she got this, helped me build this business. Yeah. And I was terrified because first of all, don't forget, I was a punk rocker. I was in a band called Crotch. I was like, cool, cool for miles and miles. And now I was going to be a cheesy internet marketer where it's like, have you always wanted to write a book? Do you feel like you know what you want to say, but you just don't know how to get it on a page? Sign up for my free report and I'll send you da da da. Like, it was so embarrassing. And so for me, a big part of it also was getting my ego out of the way and getting my pride out of the way. Because my coach one time said to me, she's like, listen, you got two choices. You can be cool and broke or cheesy and rich, which do you want right now? And I was like, okay, cheesy and rich. So, but if I hadn't taken that, that scary step of sort of like doing whatever it took to make the money I wanted to make, I never would have written you are a badass. Cause what happened eventually is I was in the cheesy, cheesy world of online marketing, but I started writing my marketing emails in my own voice eventually. And that's when the comedy came in. That's when the irreverence came in. So I took, I took the, the genre of online marketing and sort of made it in my own voice. And then I eventually took the genre of self-help and put it in my own voice, but it never would have happened if I hadn't started with that. So yeah, I think every single catalyst in my life was terrifying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so what's the best thing a coach does? What's that key? Is it making you accountable or what's the secret? I think the best thing a coach does is honestly, and it sounds so stupid and airy fairy, but they give you permission uh, because okay. it is still to say amazing to me how, how it really, all the drama we create and all the difficulties and challenges and reasons why not, blah, 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 it almost always boils down to self-love and permission and being like, who the hell am I to write a book and have an opinion about how to change your life? Or, you know, who the hell am I to have a podcast and write a song about somebody, you know, it really comes down to who the hell am I? And so, because when you take that step out and have the audacity to do something that you've never done before, that you've done before, but just you're basically becoming visible and you know what we do to our celebrities, right? Like mm -hmm. everybody has an opinion about every celebrity and they're taken down and they're judged and anybody who steps out social media, are you kidding me? Like right. it's a, it's a free for all. So giving yourself being brave enough to step out is so gigantic. And, and I really believe as a coach, it's just like seeing that it's in all of us. And it's like, if you, have the desire to do something you're, you're meant to do it not everybody has the desire to do the thing you want to go do mm -hmm. the reason you were given that desire is because you're supposed to go do it like what the hell else are we all rolling around on this ball in infinite space for right so it's the desire that leads the way but we've been taught to squash that desire and to you know do the status quo or do what your parents were taught you're supposed to do or whatever the hell so i really think this whole journey is about unlearning the the fears and the doubts and the, the reasons why not and really just shutting down all of that noise and connecting to it sounds really fun and I really want to do it and that excites me and I'm going to go do that I don't give a shit what anybody else says so that's but that I feel like a coach will completely call you on every time you come up with some lame excuse or even great excuse as to why you can't be <laughs> doing it you know they're just like, really? That's interesting. That's, and also the other great thing a coach does is, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees because you're, you're in it, right? You're in your life. These issues are very real. The day to day is very, very real to you. They're in a higher place, right? They're, they're beyond, they're not in your life and they're hopefully more experienced than you. So they can see the path that you need to take so much faster. And this is the thing. It's like, I know I've paid insane amounts of money for coaching. I made that money back so fast and 10 times over because I did everything because I'm such a nerd and I do all the things my coaches tell me to do. Mm. But also because the initial output of money, you're, you're paying for that expertise. So it would have taken me five years to do what my coach told me in, in a 30 minute conversation. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's wonderful when you get a coach that you just, you, you just 
Mm-hmm. Speak your language. Like, like it's like, it's like the teachers, you can go to school and they could be pedagogues and whatnot and, and they don't yep. get, and you don't get them, but you find that one person and it just flows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Isn't it interesting? I was thinking like one thing, because all this, the motivational stuff, you know, people can read that, but what they really need is, is, is cause we're quite lucky. We have an outlet, you know, I have pod songs and you know, and, and looking back, it's obvious, you know, I, I was, a, I was a songwriter and I was doing podcasts. If I do my own podcasts, obviously I write songs about the guests. So it's obvious. And, and you have, you know, you did all these self-help courses and you have this very, you know, way of speaking this, that you've learned in you know, this very in your front, in your face style of, so you just write it, the books in that style. And then Gregory is, you know, he's, he's studied classical music for 20 years and now he can, you know, take all that he's learned. It's kind of obvious with his hindsight, but what about people who are in the forest, as you say, how, do, how can you help them get, because if you put so much work in, but you don't have this outlet like we do, how do you, how do you find that first unique thing to do? I think you just take the next right step. So I, and again, this is about getting out of your head and trying to think through something you have no right thinking through because you've never done it before. Right. So, so, so for, I'll just use my journey as an example. Like I didn't know anything about online marketing and I sure as hell did not consider myself the nonfiction book proposal lady. Like that was not my career goal mm-hmm. at all. Right. It was the next right step. So it was writing. It was teaching people how to write. And I had already published two books at that point. So it wasn't so crazy. Um, It was a very viable income stream and I was all about making the money. So that felt right. Um, You know, it was helping people that felt right. So it wasn't by any means 100% my thing, but I didn't know what the hell my thing was. And, And I think that actually is a really important point because I think we're raised to, to, need to know the lightning bolt like i am a doctor i am a writer this is my calling like i know maybe three people who were like that i the rest of us are kind of flopping around figuring it out but you will not figure anything out if you don't get in the game so i think just taking the next right step and then the next right step and then the next right step and you sort of figure out as you go what works and what doesn't work what's fun what's not fun and and but just taking action, I think, is really critical. Okay. And write down, down all these lyrics. Okay. Just have to, just <laughs> have to make them rhyme later. You're writing lyrics right now. Yeah, how exciting. I know we need to discuss the genre of the song's going to be. I'm really excited. It's yeah. Greg. The disco. No, rock. classical. Gregory's. Yeah. Not- We're going to do very highbrow. Okay. You know? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm glad to do. It, have a job. it depends on your definition or, or, or a smaller definition of highbrow, but we'll, we'll figure something out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gregory's going to do some, come up with a composition. I'll put some lyrics on there and I'll sing it. I'll do my baritone. Yeah, people yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm playing with the idea of, of, of little, having a little motif from, you know, Adamant or from Crotch or something, you know, and just. I looked, I, I looked for Crotch to... online, but, um, and 60, 60 yeah. for Queenie as well. I did not. 60 for Queenie, we do have one Crotch song online. Uh, it's not our best piece. I know I've actually, I've got it. I won't put our music online. If you, if you. Well, you knew the Adamant song, Power Tool of Love, right? That's the, the one that Adamant is in the video. Yeah. So that's a clutch song. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I love the titles. One of them was I'm Done Stitch Me Up. Is that right? I So Me Up, I've Had Enough. That was my fan made song. <laughs> so good. The lyrics to that are just so brilliant. I can hardly speak. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to be going, we're doing highbrow, okay, today. Nothing. We're not going to plumb the depths of crop. <laughs> Down to the gut. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm trying to get Jack Greg because you've you're not doing consultations anymore, no. I mean, you're. Yeah. Yeah, for Go on, Gregory. Get some. This is a unique opportunity to. Well, is, if if no, the price uh, per hour is, you don't even think about this. You owe me now, Gregory. No, you no, owe no, me. Was, you know, I listen. I I do owe you, right, right. But you know what? You know what? You're, yeah. No. Um. Um. No, I was sort of, I'm not, no, uh, one of the things, sorry, that I was actually curious and intrigued about, um, 
uh, and this has got nothing to do with speaking or anything like, like, like this, but it was just, you know, just, uh, um, uh, over, I'm sure over your career, over, over, over all these meetings you've had with so many different people, who was the most intriguing dinner guest you've ever sat down with and mm-hmm. inspired you the most? Um, you know, and I'm sure from, 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 from some point you experienced, there's a vast plethora of unique and phenomenal experiences, right? And, and I think that's where, that, that's where we're so fortunate when we're out in the public eye and, you know, we can, we can have these moments that, you know, if we weren't doing what we were doing, we would never, we would never come across them. So right. the, just, it, was there, is, is there, a, is there an intriguing dinner guest or lunch guest that has just, uh, really inspired this you? Is the, this is the one question you want, we want to ask a, a, a coach like this. Uh, I mean, uh, this, you could right, ask. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you wouldn't, you would a million bucks. I pay someone 300 bucks an hour to ask them who they would like to have dinner with Gregory. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, but as I said, I am, I am, I am pre-infancy, right? So there's so much stuff that I'm just working out. My, I'm not going to labor you with any, any, any boring. This is an opportunity for you, Gregory. This is you. What about a shirt, Gregory? Come on. No, no, no. No, I mean, I really like, like, I don't have anything. Uh, right here, right now, that I sort you've of had have. weeks to prepare, no, Gregory. Um, I, I love your on the spot, um, uh, 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 with this, you know, but um, well, uh, well, tell us about tell her about uh, your idea. Uh, I mean, tell her about your what you're going to be doing with it. Okay, okay, so fair enough. So, 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 um, so I am just sorry, I, I'm as I say, infancy of the speaking thing, just starting trying to create my my my, my one liner, my positioning statement clarifying for, for, for my audiences and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's beyond, you, you know, you know, uh, baby steps. Um, you know, what I'm trying to do is use, you know, uh, love being in front of audiences, love being in front of corporate audiences, when I do galas, when I do that, when I'm in cardiac work. So I'm trying to translate the absolute comfort I have on stage and talking to people mm. into a teachable moment, into, you know, uh, mm-hmm. a, a, solving a corporate problem, whether that's, uh, using music as a metaphor to solve sort of employee uh, problem or, you know, employee maximizing their output, whether that's leadership for a C-suite, something like that. So it's, it's, it's not even a question, right? It's just, it's just, it's just where my head is just, it's just, I'm trying to figure out the problem to solve. I'm trying to figure out from 25 years of stage experience that is yeah. six inches wide, but six miles deep. Sure. Yeah. You know, you, you don't want to solve everybody's problem. You don't want to, you know what I mean? You know, you know, you, yeah. it's just about, um, and it's narrowing that down. So my process so far has been, you know, I'm, I'm, I've just started, st- started working with a coach and it's, you, you know, I have all my stories, whether that's, you know, playing for President Biden, whether having lunch with Salman Rushdie, whether it's all these moments when you, you, you're doing the, the anthem for the, the Green Bay yeah. Act in Lambeau Field and you can't fight, you can't use either fingers, you know, when you, and you have 70, 79,000 people that want something really good. Oh, wow. No, right. So it's, how do I teach the, how do I convert the solving, problem solving in the moment? For, yeah. For, right. So, so yeah. it's beyond like, like, and you can see it in how I'm explaining it to you. It's just. No, no, no. And, but I do want to say something that first of all, um, we make it much more difficult than it needs to be because you are in the forest, right? So you're like, oh my God, there's so many things I can say. Yeah. I, I assume they're just, how do I narrow it down? Right. And the very first thing you said was, how do I, how do I teach people? How do I share the fact that I'm actually really comfortable on stage with other people? Mm-hmm. Right. That's yeah. sort of what you're saying. Okay. That yeah. right there, you're done. Because. And then what you do is you get into the specifics. So it's when we stay general that we cause the overwhelm and the confusion and the drama, you know, three years to do something that could take 15 minutes. So what I would say to you is, and first of all, remember that we forget that the stuff that comes easily to us is teachable and super profound to other people, right? So the stuff that you're like is so stupid. I'm not going to tell them that. Everybody knows that. They don't know that. That's going to change their lives. Yeah. So first of all, is really sinking into that knowledge that like what you have to offer is is real and so valuable to other people and absolutely not a given. 
And then I would, and, and this could literally take you 15 minutes, come up and you can have, you can have, you know, clients help you with this, or you can actually, I don't know how you would get this information, but you might know it yourself anyway, because you are a pro. What are the top 10 things that people are terrified about when they go on stage? Like get into those specifics and then you create your talk around those very specific takeaways, right? What do I do with my hands when I give a talk? Yep. What if I forget what I'm going to say? What, you know, what if people don't laugh at my jokes? What if, you know, you just come up with 10 what ifs that you think are the top 10 things that people are scared shitless about when they go on stage and there's your talk. And, and, and no matter how stupid it may seem and no matter how like, oh, everybody knows that, like they don't know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Wow, yeah, that, that's that, fantastic. That, 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 that's, that's you owe me, Gregory. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm handling the boats right here, right now. You know? <laughs> okay. We split the fee. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. But it, but Jen, that that that's that, that that's exactly your point of uh, a coach uh, having had the experience of doing this and seeing it and just can, and, and then when for someone like me, it was in, in this period of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, for, you just uh, perfect example. You just shed. You just part the trees. Make sure that and and just and just provide the light. And honestly, you're not. And and stop saying you're in an infant 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 stage. You're not. You're you're a fucking pro. You've been doing this a long time, you know. And you've got skills that people would kill for. So you're not. Yeah. No. No. But, but, but when I say infancy, uh, it, it's about sort of trying to trying to just figure out the branding and the start of the speaking part of this. Okay. You, you, that's that's what I mean by the, the infancy of. Yeah, but people want yeah. to know that. People want to know how to be relaxed like you on stage in front of tens of thousands it's of people. Not. It's, it's a huge, I mean, my God, you could make trillions, really. It's so, so big. And it's that, you know, especially now where everybody's speaking on Zoom, like, how are you comfortable on a Zoom thing where you're looking into a weird camera and you can't even see anybody? Like, maybe there's that component. But I would, but I would just stick to, like, the top 10 things that people are most terrified of and then just, and then just riff on that. Okay. And, and other thing, too, you guys, like, yeah, the coaches usually are more experienced and we're not in the forest, but think about how many times you've had a friend come to you and complain about a problem and you're like, really? Like, you know, I'm dating this new guy, but he never calls me and he's got 300 girlfriends. I don't know, should I break up with him? But I really, you're like, seriously, like you really don't know what to do with this. Like you can see their problems so clearly, but they really can't because they're in it. Like you've yeah. definitely you've had those experiences, right? And so we're all, it's really honestly just about the fact that we're all in our own forest. And so it's just easier to see somebody else's problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so true, so true. While you were exp doing that, Jen, you know, while you had well, that bolt of lightning there and you just saw what Gregory's problem, you saw it so quickly. I just kind of had also a mirror because that's what I do with the songs. Also, we're having this long conversation and I don't know what the song's going to be about, but then maybe tomorrow morning I'm sitting in the quiet and suddenly these, I get, oh, what we were, the, the, the thing we were talking about was this. And so. Right. Totally. And don't you find like when, you know, writing songs or writing any kind of creativity, like you do exactly what we're doing now. And this, then this relates to everything. I mean, everything is the same. And then like you go for a hike or you're in the bathtub and all of a sudden you're like, Ta -da! it's when you kind of stop thinking so much yeah. that you allow. And that's the surrender, right? So it's like when you're thinking and thinking and thinking, and you have to do the thinking. It's all part of the process. But the surrender comes when you're like, sitting in the bathtub and you're not really even thinking about it. You're walking around and then you get the idea because you've, you've taken off the blinders of the, the mind process and allowed the information, the, the thoughts and the ideas and the, you know, that's what I think of as like universal energy is like, where the hell do good ideas come from? Where does desire come from? Where does inspiration come from? That's, you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to diss on our conscious minds either. Like I think the figuring out and the planning and all that is super, super important. But I think our culture certainly puts way too much on that and doesn't really allow for the. Yeah, that's something I discovered as I was talking, to, researching more about you. Is that the, you know we're energetic creatures in an energetic universe. I thought you'd be more about you know because maybe that's the problem. You know, you say we're in a classroom, which I really agree with, and that the problem you were facing was that you were having money problems, and that's at the time. But that's just, that's just one of the lessons, you know, when you're past that, you don't have to worry about that. And so 
but so once you solve a problem, it doesn't keep repeating. You know, not necessarily. It certainly can. You can certainly slide backwards. Um, so I think you do have to pay attention to who you hang out with and what you're reading and what you're buying into. You know, it's, it's a, it's, that's why I call it going to the spiritual gym. Like you don't go to the gym and get into shape and then you don't got to go to the gym anymore. Oh yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So you don't, Always. you have to constantly keep that muscle strong. So I have to believe me, there have been times when I'm just like, it's all got to go away. Like I'm going to make some bad investment or something horrible and someone's going to figure out that I actually really don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, who knows? We all have that and and then I'm like, okay, that's just like take it back a moment. So it really is just about pause and the like redirecting the focus. But no, you absolutely have to keep those muscles strong. And, and there's also this great phrase, "new level, new devil." So yeah, okay. So money is my main, you know, obsessive neurotic problem. But believe me, there are plenty more that have come up since I, you know, put that one down. So we're all. We're all always working on stuff. That's always been your thing as well, that if I can do this, anyone can do it. So exactly. you're, you're, you're using your skills for good now as well. You're with Planned Parenthood and the American Civil Liberties Union. You're, we're helping charities achieve, look for their one thing now over there. Yeah, and that's sort of something I want to shift into doing more of and, and honestly choosing one cause i'll give you know i'll definitely donate to everything but i want to sort of figure out how i can be more effective somehow or something but there's so many god the world is such a train wreck like how do you it was so, <laughs> so that's, you know anyway so i'm that's really sort of the next big project for sure yeah that's that's really worthwhile because you have these even just these short consultancies with charities can make a huge difference to the way that yeah. All right, great. Was there anything else we wanted to talk about? Not on my end. Is there anything else, you guys? I'm good. I've, I've learned buckets already, so I'm... <laughs> well, I'm so excited to hear the song. This is great. So are we. Yeah. And you guys, and if you need, um, if you discovered along the way there was something that you forgot to ask or whatever, just reach out to my assistant. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, get to work. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, guys. Lovely to hear you. Bye. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, that was really lovely. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah, sorry, I, I didn't know if that went well or not. No, because I, I wasn't expecting just to 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 uh, you know, which I I, I actually did appreciate. Sorry, but isn't that crazy? Because yeah, you were talking to me, had vague ideas about yeah, 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 and what to people, what, but you didn't really understand what business people and what the problem yeah. other people are struggling with. And then she said, this is the first thing you said and people will yeah. pay where people really want that. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's amazing. Cause I like, I've got my, ironically, I've got my first coaching call with the, with, with the, with the company I'm working with tomorrow, specifically on, on this and validating and trying to figure out, clarifying what, what, what you are solving. Right. And I've been working back and forth and again, uh, when you're doing it on your own, it's, it's trickier, but like when someone who has, and like, one, one, like the thing we spoke about was that, you know, what's, what's wonderful about her thing is there's, there's, there's like my initial thing was, is it'll be very bland, right? It'll be just, you know, it'll be very vanilla, but she puts that badass, she gets all those things that, that, mm -hmm. that we act for someone to want to jump in. And that's the thing that I need to figure out of how to okay, let's, let, let, let's, let's take this, let's take the vanilla stuff out, uh, like in terms of the title and branding and how do you make that where people want to jump in? So, yeah. And I think also yeah. just to stand out, you need to just focus on one thing, not, yeah. not, not be vague about what you can learn from music, but just be confident um, on stage. It's like, that and, 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 and that's the thing of being six inches wide in terms of, you know, the, the width of how, how of what you, what you're doing, but go so deep. That's where you want your niche to. To position yourself to 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 teach that, um, but on a, on, a, on a, just a different. Note, any way I could get a recording of just that 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 section, or or like just just like to hear it sure. again. I'll definitely send it to you. Yeah, also to yeah to help yeah. with the song and the inspiration. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, brass tacks um, song. Uh, when do you need this by deadlines? Everything. <laughs> um, are, are you saying like tomorrow? Um, no. Well, I mean, this episode will probably go live in about three months. So. 
Okay, so, so we're okay. backwards from there. So we have plenty of time, but okay. it is better to work, start work now while the, while yeah. the iron is hot, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, cause like, cause like, uh, I am a very, like when it comes to writing stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm an arranger as opposed to a writer, right? So, to, so but, um, I know I love what I do, uh, and I will nail this for you, but it, it just, it's a slower process for me. Okay, right? sure. Just to, just, just to be honest with you, um, like I'm hearing, you know, cause she talked about this stage of her life being more mellow than the punk stuff. Right. And right, just yeah. uh, rowing down and I, I, I keep hearing like, 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 like something which was similar to, you know, that theme from deer hunter, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you, you know, and, and, and that just kept going back to my head, you know, oh, that's so, beautiful, so, yeah. yeah. So, so like if there was a way I could just do something, uh, I'm thinking inspired by that, right? Like, like or, or, or it inspired in, in, you know, the prayer, prayer that, that, that seems to be the creative, that that's the creative mood that I would think this to be. Right? Okay. Fantastic. Wow. That's deer hunters. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, um, obviously you don't want to plagiarize anything, but that doesn't, that, so that, that, so that, 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 that's just the canvas that I'm thinking of. Right. Okay. Um, now what do you like, there's a way. No, I could do this and see if I could do it. And how, a, a, just, what, just a couple of questions on my set. Length. For three minutes. Usually. Okay. But for a classical piece, it can be longer. I mean, you know, as we're not doing, as we're not doing an, you know, a string quartet or anything, we're going to keep, yeah. we keep it very simple. I'm sure, I assume you only want to do one part. Um, yeah. Well, no, listen, so what I'm thinking of is, um, there's a great, there's a great little thing called acapella. So. I might, which could be really, it, it'd be really lovely and personal, uh, if I write two, possibly three parts. Oh, wow. Just left together. That would be great. Right. Now, th I, again, that's not going to happen by tomorrow morning. Right. So, oh, sure. so, you know, but, uh, and I'm not a songwriter and I'm not a composer and a ranger as stuff. So, but I feel I could do something beautiful. So play a melody, like, like play, play a melody and have sort of pizzicato violin wow. at the back. As, 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 as that sort of harp or piano accompaniment feel, right? Okay, so okay. it, so then, so, so there's that. There's we how we the, can have piano if you want, we can, we can put it in. We have a pianist, um, um, but I think it's, I think it's better that you come up with a motif and you come up with the, 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 the melody, because if I come up with a melody, then you have to. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, okay. Melody. Um, Okay, um, now how do the words, what, what's the best? So basically I'm going to put melody and you're going to put words. Does, does, does pitch matter? Right. Sorry. What I mean by that, but, but there's level of pitch, right? So if, um, you mean the key? Presume, no, no, no. I was going to say, uh, you could always just bring me down in the mix so that you're, you, sorry, it's, it's really the mix of you balancing you, you cause you, your, your words have to be here for the ear and my melody comes in there, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think it's better that you have, you do some complex choruses, you know, with, with, okay. the, with, a, with a melody and then kind of draw, have some background, slower, slower chord changes. Then I can sing a melody on top of that. And then I stop singing and you come back in with a, with a theme. Um, and I can do that, just have that once or twice in the song. So, okay. so that you, so that if you're playing complex, it's difficult for me to sing over. So if you have yeah. some simple parts, just, just, okay. Simple parts. Um, are you okay with, um, and the last thing, are you okay with me bouncing like, like, like drafts to you? Oh, yeah, you know, great. I, I, I love the brute. Uh, and what I mean by that is. Uh, Greg, this is shite. We need to, <laughs> or fucking love this, but get the shit out of the middle. You, you know, so I love it because that, because okay. it's gotta be possible what works for you. Right. And I, I, my, my ego is not in this. Right. So I, I like to, that's fine. That would be the. Fantastic. Most, most, no, I'm, I'm just can't wait to hear because I have never collaborated like this before. I, I always write the song on acoustic guitar and then everyone adds on top. So this is a completely yeah. different way for me to work. And this is the first time I'm ever doing this as well. So, um, wow. Well. Okay. Um, great. Okay. Um, cause I can even do, even do a spoken word chorus or something, you know, 
It doesn't have to be a big melody. It can just be, you know, inspired by the lyrics of the of what we were talking about. So it's this. I think this song is more about the. It's not. I don't want to. I don't catchy chorus. I'll just have one verse, and as you do, you, the the cor the the chorus sh should be your. Okay. Your theme. You know, okay. So, so so for you, for for your ver verse, I can always do chords underneath that. Or simple stuff. Yeah. Under, yeah. 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 And, um, and we can always learn then after that, that in after. Okay, we will figure something out. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Leave this with me. C can you give me? Let's say I I'm going to try and see what I can get done by next week. Okay. Uh, just to have, just to have like because I I'm I'm much more a get this done another way rather. It's better. Yeah, it is better. You no, know, yeah, because it's 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 just harder otherwise than it is definitely the, harder. It's fresh now. And yeah. You've, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, um, let's see if I can do more. Okay. All right. Um, but I, I, I sort of like the idea of just poetically at peace and nice and that deer hunter feel, you okay, know, yeah. that, that, that's really what, what I would. Fantastic. Okay. Can't wait to hear it. Jesus, well, that, that, that makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Um, um, yeah, so these aren't my, my, my regular glasses. So just, just, just so you're aware, I think there's one edit um, where I, I did, I looked at it twice and then I, I re, 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 um, I, I, I thought myself and I said, Jeff, before I said Jack, just, just so you know. No problem. Uh, in, yeah, well, no, no, that, 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 that's, that's offensive. Uh, so, <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I do apologize about that. Um, it's been a real pleasure, Gregory. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks. Okay, uh, give me a week. I'll get back to you about something and then we can go from there. All right, then. Good luck. All right. Thanks, man. Great to edit. Thank you. Cheers.
beautiful. A touch of class on pod songs. So go out and get the badass book, jensincero.com or on Amazon. Go to gregoryharrington.com or search Gregory Harrington on Spotify or your favorite music streaming service. Check the show notes for all the links as well. Thanks to my musicians, Mauricio Cernicola, Massimino Vozza and Luigi Falcione and my researcher, Dori Verbo. And thanks to you, the listener. Please go to podsongs.com and check all our music there. And a reminder that I have another podcast, as if this wasn't enough work. It's called The Mystic Cast, and is all about spirituality, UFOs, mysticism, the occult, and the ethereal society, the teachings of which led me to start this project, serving the servers, helping those who help others. And it has its page on podsongs.com as well. All right, guys, until next time, see ya.